So for a lot of mappers, having a map picked for track of the day is a big deal. If you're unsure of what track of the day is, I'm not sure how you found this video, but welcome. Thank you for watching. And Track of the Day is a map built by someone or a group of people, mostly from the community. When it's revealed, there is a daily tournament called Cup of the Day that takes place on it, and players then have the next 24 hours to set their best time on the map. Once the next day's map is revealed, the in-game leaderboards are frozen. I have personally have had three maps make it through the process where two were selected for Track of the Day. In order to get track of the day, your map has to be reviewed by Nadeo and hand chosen. I'll be going over my process, rules you have to follow, and tips and tricks for getting your map reviewed and hopefully picked. So to start things off, you have to have a map. Once you have a completed map, you have to send it through map review. If you want some tips on how to get the most out of map review, it was the previous video I made. You have to send the map through a few times to rack up enough votes, and you also have to have a high enough average vote. In case you don't know, players vote 1 to 5 stars at the end of the map review play session. Nideo then relies on an algorithm that pulls the best scoring maps to be reviewed for track of the day selection, and you can check the progress of your map by going to this link, it will be in the description. The goal I normally go for is an average of 4.4 at 40 votes, although my most recent review I've had was at 4.3 stars, so it's not a hard rule. Once you have a score you're happy with and a good number of votes, you can wait. If still no review has happened within a week, keep cycling your map through map review maybe once or twice a week. And once it is reviewed on that page I mentioned earlier, you will get an icon with the stats, and once you get this icon, you're done. Nadeo has seen your map and might have put it in the queue for track of the day. It normally takes about one to two weeks between being reviewed and appearing as track of the day. Unfortunately, there's not a way to know if your map has been selected. I know, I want to know too. It's, <laughs> it's agonizing just waiting to see if it's been selected, but it's there to prevent the mapper from getting all their friends to practice their map. Like, hey, my map got selected here. You can have an advantage for a cup of the day. If your map hasn't been tracked the day after three weeks, it was probably not selected. Especially if it's your first track of the day, Nadeo is normally pretty nice with selecting tracks. They wanna to try to get a wide variety of authors and map builders. However, there are some ways to guarantee that your map won't make it. So when building your map, there are rules that you have to follow. There are occasional exceptions, but not very often. Typically, the track length will sit between 40 seconds to one minute long. Nadeo wants to give enough time for players to be able to gain leads, but doesn't want the cup of the day to last too long. The entire track also needs to be double respawnable. This means you should be able to double respawn from every checkpoint and still be able to finish. And that is exactly how I test this method. There should be no hard speed checks. You don't want the track to be difficult. And generally there has to be good FPS frames per second. It's hard to tell, but the track can't contain so much stuff that it tanks the FPS on all but the beefiest machines, and this is especially true now with the console release. As long as you don't go completely overboard on custom scenery and trees, you should be fine. You also can't include any extreme visual stimuli, as this can prompt epileptic triggers, motion sickness, basically stuff that would give the average person a headache. You must keep everything PG, so no depictions of alcohol, drugs, violence, religion, politics, etc. There's also no copyrighted stuff. This one's a bit inconsistent, but at the very least, it'll hurt your chances if Nadeo doesn't want to risk it. And the newest rule is the author time can't be too hard. Basically, the hardest author time should still have the top 100 players being able to get it. I know a lot of really good players complained about this rule, but this is one that I will never have to worry about, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm pretty neutral on it. As long as these rules are followed, pretty much any map style can be selected. 
And most of these rules are in place so that everyone can drive Cup of the Day. It's not just reserved for the more skilled players. Outside of these rules though, there are a few more ways you can boost your odds of getting selected. One of the best things I did was join a map review discord and get detailed feedback about areas my map could improve on. From the route itself to scenery, I don't think my maps could have gotten track of the day without the feedback I got there. Personally, I use TMA, discord link will be in the description. You definitely don't have to do this, but I think it does help a bit to also build an unconventional mapping style. Obviously, Nadeo doesn't want to put five dirt maps as track of the day in a row. They'll put them all in the same week, but they'll want to break it up with something. You aren't really competing with other maps for a spot, as if it's a good track, Nadeo will want to put it up regardless, but if there's a lot of tech tracks in map review lately, Underwater Reactor Bobsled will stand out a lot more. That being said, it still has to be a track that's good to drive, with great scenery of course. Just have to watch out for map review. I don't know how many 5 stars you'll get with that idea. One of the best ways to make it through map review is amazing scenery. The scenery of the day joke being very common with maps that it's very obvious the route is just there to show off the scenery. I'm pretty bad at scenery myself, still trying to learn the basics, but I do eventually want to make a video about it. I'll get more into detail on scenery a little bit later. As far as just kind of generic information, I just found this out myself, but it does make sense when looking back. So each player contributes one score to the map, including the mapper. Meaning if you give a score on a map that you've already voted on, instead of adding your vote again, your score simply gets updated. This prevents people from spamming the server as the same few players can't continuously bump up their own scores. But how does Nadeo review tracks? Which ones actually get selected? Specifics are unknown, but Basically, the higher the rating, the sooner it'll get reviewed. I talked a little bit about the algorithm before, but it basically picks the track with a mix of the highest scores and the highest number of votes. And the scores and votes are tied to the map ID itself. Anytime any changes are made to a map, and I mean any changes, it gets a new ID and no votes carry over. All votes go away if you delete your map off of map review as well. So I would definitely recommend deleting all maps you don't want Nadeo taking a look at off of the map review server, especially if they have a ton of votes. Scores never expire as long as the map stays unchanged. There have been quite a few track of the days in the past where a player has uploaded an old track to map review, maybe to show some people, maybe it was relevant to a conversation that they were having. It was never reviewed in the past, but since it recently went through the server, the algorithm takes another look at it. sees a decent score, lots of votes, and pushes it to get looked at by Nadeo. Since the map seems fine on the surface, it gets selected for track of the day. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but it has led to already known and hunted maps getting picked, as well as ice maps that just don't drive that well since the update. Can lead to a lackluster and slash or disappointing cup of the day experience. I've also seen past versions of a map that have some issues that were fixed later, but since the newer map has a new ID, there's no way for Nadeo to know that this is an old version. So the old version of the map gets selected, which means the new polished version will never get chosen. I don't blame Nadeo for this, by the way. It's not a perfect system by any means, but we know how it generally works. Expecting an employee to go through and double check every map to make sure it's not already hunted or that it's the latest version on Trackmania Exchange is too much in my opinion. I think it's more on the mappers. If you have an old map that you no longer want to be track of the day, delete it off map review. But what happens if your map gets reviewed but then a cut is discovered? Thankfully, we do know who reviews and selects most of the track of the day maps. Kona found on several Trackmania discords, including the official one, is the person to message if you have an issue. I personally messaged him when I got the feedback shadow issues on Lakeside to see if it was a deal breaker for track of the day. He responded the next day giving more context that it wasn't that big of a deal, just something to keep in mind for the future. He's very friendly and if you have a map reviewed but you discover a problem with it, message him on there. I think it's fantastic we know who's selecting the track, so let's keep it that way. 
Don't bombard him with every question about track of the day selection or to take a look at your map or God, please don't ask why your map wasn't selected. Don't force him into hiding, you know? If you have questions about the process, check some Discord servers to see if anyone else knows the answer. Overall, just be considerate. Unfortunately, the biggest obstacle to getting your map noticed by Nadeo is map review. Part of the reason I made my last video was that it led to this one. If you want tips specific to general map review feedback, I would suggest watching that video. I'm going to go into more detail about how to get through map review with track of the day in mind, but there are a few tips I'll be bringing over from that video. Starting with join at peak times. This is when other mappers will be joining and you can get the most amount of votes in the shortest amount of time. A majority of my one star ratings on my maps have come when I submitted them at off hours. I'm not entirely sure why, but some lobbies are just a lot harsher with their scores. I went into more detail in my map review video, but more people means more chatters, and more people chatting leads to higher scores as they're having a good time. Joining when there's already a queue also gives you an opportunity to scout out who's already in the lobby. It has happened before where a few trolls will hang out and one star every map that's brought up. Also, sometimes there's an argument that breaks out in chat and angry players tend to not vote well. Basically, if you're getting bad vibes, just dip and resubmit the next day. Harder maps also tend to struggle a lot as players find it difficult to tell the difference between hard but well calculated and awkward maps in just three minutes. When building the map itself, you have to keep that three minute time limit in mind. It's definitely possible to get a harder route through, but it has to be obvious where to go. I think every map has had someone ask for more signs on it, so <laughs> take that comment with a grain of salt. Just make sure it's not easy to get lost, and even if you crash a lot, you should still be able to finish. This harkens back to the double respawn rule. Just because People won't give five stars if they can't get to the end in three minutes. My next big tip for map review is that scenery is more and less important than you think. I mentioned before, but a common joke about track of the day maps is instead calling them scenery of the day. Maps that get selected tend to look fantastic and it's not very common for an average looking track to pop up. This was honestly my biggest concern with Penguin Slide and Lakeside as I didn't think the scenery, especially for Penguin Slide, was good enough. But I've learned the two phases of Track of the Day selection, Map Review and Nadeo, look at scenery differently. Having good scenery is absolutely crucial to getting through Map Review, but Nadeo doesn't really care about it as long as the track looks good enough. Remember, Map Review only has a map up for 3 minutes, so each track has to impress in a very short amount of time. One of the easiest ways to impress people is with great scenery, which is also why we tend to see a lot of custom items and blender maps. It's possible to get a track through that doesn't drive well with amazing scenery, but impossible to get a map reviewed with an amazing layout but looks bland. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. It's important to try to make your map look good, but as someone whose biggest struggle has been scenery, this can be very frustrating. I'm also not saying that every map with loads of custom items is bad to drive. The best track of the day maps have successfully combined a great route with amazing scenery. And for the record, I think it's very rare for a legit bad map to get through and selected, unless it's Neo Cupra. I only recently started to feel like I have a decent grasp on how to make good scenery. So a video on it will come eventually, I just want a bit more experience first. To give a couple tips though, the way I got started was taking a look at maps with scenery I really liked and seeing if I could replicate it on my own. Don't copy and paste blocks, build it all yourself and make some adjustments so you're not just stealing. It's what I did for Penguin Slide and even though it kind of looks like the scenery at home, it still got track of the day in the end and I'm a lot better now because of what I learned. I would also recommend staying with the vanilla blocks for the most part. If you want a few more pieces you feel like you're missing, go for it, but it's very easy to get lost and download hundreds of custom items because you feel like your scenery isn't good without it. It can cause the FPS of the track to plummet, but lots of track of the days are built with 100% vanilla scenery, and it's important to figure out what's possible in-game before branching out. 
It's also important to have the player always looking at something when they're driving. Basically, you don't want them to turn a corner and all the scenery is just gone for a moment. They just see the stadium. Verticality can also do a lot for the immersion. I notice newer mappers tend to not include elements that the players are driving under. They just kind of include walls and like maybe some towers here and there, but but including that tunnel, maybe a few pieces flying above the player's head, it can really do a lot for the immersion. If you keep these in mind, you're off to a good start on scenery building. The one last thing about map review is that your map can actually pop up without you submitting it. If there isn't a map queued, instead of a thumbnail of the next map, you'll see a random map text. The random map tends to be maps uploaded recently with decent scores that the algorithm wants a bit more information on. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. For reasons I stated here and in my previous video, map review is a mixed bag at the best of times. I don't think I've seen a single map make it through that random selection without at least one one star vote. This is why I say to never give one star on map review unless the map truly deserves it. It's so disheartening to wake up in the morning, check my map to see if it's been reviewed yet, and my score overnight went from 4.5 to 3.8 because I somehow racked up multiple one star ratings. It happened to Lakeside, and I ended up having to take the map down and start all over. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about this. Also part of the reason easier routes and great scenery have a better time getting high scores. I don't want to discourage anyone from trying to get a map to track the day, but there's a few reasons why veterans don't look at map review fondly. Also, all because you get a few one-star votes doesn't mean you have to start completely over. Any more than three, and I would consider it, but it's very rare not to get at least one. I've stated a few times already, but I do recommend taking a look at my previous video about map review as I think the tips in there help this process a ton. But to wrap everything up, getting track of the day for the first time is amazing. Unfortunately, just building a good route isn't enough. You have to make sure everyone can play and complete it. Check this link, it will be in the description, to check out your average scores and to see if anything has gotten reviewed. If you have an old map you don't want to get track of the day, delete it off map review. Kona can help with direct problems if your map has already been reviewed. And I know map review can be frustrating, but there are ways to alleviate some of that pressure. Make sure your route is clear, do some extra work on that scenery, try not to get too frustrated with the process, and for extra feedback, join a map review discord. Follow these tips and I think you're well on your way to getting a map to be track of the day. Getting there for the first time was more difficult than I was expecting, but it was so cool to be able to log on to Twitch and see everybody driving my map, to watch YouTube videos of people driving my map, and not only that, actually enjoying it. I know, incredible, incredible. It did take a few maps before I was able to get a track of the day though. Penguin Slide was definitely not my first map. Now I feel like I have more of a process and that is what I shared with you today. I hope this video helped, and if you were lost, maybe this gave you more of a game plan to get back on track. If you have any additional tips, questions, comments about anything, you can share those down below. Speaking of sharing, if you want to share this with some other mappers that are maybe trying to get track of the day as well, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like. If you want to join me on my mapping journey to hopefully become a decent Trackmania mapper someday, you can go ahead and subscribe. But with all of that out of the way, thank you. I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my video, and I hope your wet plastic tech gets nothing but five stars. Bye!